All right, let's go back three years to the end of 2013. It's Chris Christie's first press conference since being reelected governor of New Jersey in a landslide. And there was presidential buzz all around him. But he found himself at that press conference bombarded by questions about a story that had been brewing in the local press. A story about mysterious lane closures on the George Washington Bridge that had wrecked havoc on the town of Fort Lee, New Jersey. Lane closures that some were saying might have been a political dirty trick by members of the Christie administration. Yeah, I worked the cones, actually, uh, Matt. Unbeknownst to everybody, I was actually the guy out there. I was in overalls and a hat, so I wasn't, a, but I actually was the guy working the cones out there. You really are not serious with that question. That was early December of 2013. Chris Christie trying to laugh it all off. But two weeks later, two weeks after that press conference, the issue hadn't gone away. And this time he was more direct and more serious. I've spoken to everybody on my staff and asked anybody around here and my campaign manager if they knew um, anything more about this that we didn't already know. And they've told me no. Um, and so, I, you know, the chief of staff uh, and the chief counsel assure me uh, that they feel comfortable, that they have all the information we need to have. He was assured that none of them knew anything. Now, right now, pretrial hearings are being held for two former Christie administration officials. Bridget Ann Kelly, she sent the time for some traffic problems in Fort Lee email that came to light just a couple weeks after that press conference. Also, pretrial hearings for Bill Baroni, a top Christie appointee at the Port Authority, the Port Authority, which oversees the George Washington Bridge. Now, again, this process, this bridge gate process is moving incredibly slowly. Think of Heinz tomato ketchup. That's about as fast as this is moving. But today, 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 actual real news on Bridgegate, and it may be big news because of a motion from the defense. We now have coming out today a text message exchange that appears to have taken place during that December 13th press conference we just showed you. Here's that text message exchange. Quote, are you listening? He just flat out lied about senior staff and Stepien, Bill Stepien, Christie's campaign manager, not being involved. Response to this text. I'm listening. Gov is doing fine. Holding his own up there. Now, the first aid writing again, quote, yes, but he lied. And if emails are found with a subpoena or Chris Christie for governor emails are uncovered in discovery, if it comes to that, it could be bad. Now, the person who seems to be saying in this exchange that Christie lied in that press conference is Christina Renna. She was then an aide to Bridget Kelly in Christie's office. And here she is in these newly released text messages from the end of 2013 saying that Christie was, her words, flat out lying. Now, that exchange again, December 2013, almost three years ago. Christie today telling the Associated Press that the texts are, quote, nothing new, and he strongly denies that he lied at that press conference. His spokesman today tells us, quote, the governor's statements have been clear. Nothing contained in this text message changes that in any way. He stands by those statements completely and unequivocally. And the governor's office also pointing out to us that weeks after that December 2013 press conference, Chris Christie said that it turned out he had been lied to by Bridget Kelly. So maybe that explains what looks like a pretty big inconsistency here. That is one possibility. The discovery of these texts would seem to raise a lot of possibilities. And we have just the person to help us sort them out. Joining us now is Matt Katz, Peabody Award winning reporter for WNYC, author of American Governor, Chris Christie's Bridge to Redemption. Matt, we are very glad to have you with us tonight. So any way you can translate these texts to us, we just got this exchange. Suddenly people are trying to figure out, does it mean a lot? Does it mean nothing? What's your best interpretation of what we're looking at? Yeah, to put it in a little bit of perspective, this is the first piece of evidence we have so far seen in this three-year-old saga from somebody within Christie's circle, within the administration, indicating that they believed or perhaps knew he was involved in the cover-up. So we're talking not about closing the lane to punish the mayor. We're talking about this mysterious three or four month period after the lane closures when Christie was telling us, I was in that room that day during that press conference, when Christie was telling us there was nothing going on, that the, the administration's story was that it was a traffic study that they were conducting, and that's why there was a traffic jam. Now we know that somebody, and may, perhaps many people within the administration and in the campaign, 
thought that there was a cover-up going on and that the governor knew about it. And there's also this phrase that Christina Renna uses. She says Christie's campaign manager was involved. I don't know if that means, we don't know if that means involved in the actual uh, conspiracy to close the lane, to punish the mayor, or the uh, cover-up in the, in the aftermath. Uh, there's going to be more that comes out at trial. This trial is coming in a month and Christina Renna will be testifying, and there could be a whole load of new documents and emails that shed light on whether the governor was involved in either the, the closure of the lanes or the conspiracy to cover it up after the fact. Yeah, and, and we should know Christina Renna, she testified before the state legislature. They were looking into this. This is about two years ago. She didn't mention this. This didn't come up then, but she mentioned these, uh, these trials are, are getting underway. What's her role going to be in the trial? She's definitely going to testify. We know that. And, and she, her lawyer said today that she won't talk until that point. Um, she's uh, currently a lobbyist and uh, works uh, in, with the administration and legislators. So she still has, has ties with Christie World. And she was the first person to testify when the legislature did their own investigation. And again, like you said, she never brought this up. Um, and she also provided a lot of documents, but apparently did not provide these text messages. So she deleted them. And now Democrats are now saying that she should be investigated uh, for possibly hiding evidence, um, which could lead a whole new road uh, that we could go down involving her and what others close to Christie uh, may have been hiding. Remember, she also had claimed that her boss, Bridget Ann Kelly, who's under federal indictment now and again faces a trial next month, she had said that Bridget Kelly had told her to delete an email that implicated Bridget. So um, there's a lot of moving parts here, and we're going to find out a lot more about Christie and, and all of these, uh, the role of all of these people in, a, in just a few weeks, I think. All right, Matt Katz from WNYC, thanks for the time. Appreciate it. Sure, Steve. All right. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.